Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed for this month's q and I'm here with Tim, and without wasting any more time, we're gonna jump into the questions. Okay, first question is from YouTube. If AMD made their B350 motherboard overclockable, why did Intel not make their B360 overclockable and keep their H370 locked? Oh, okay, the B360 and H370. Sorry, yeah, I, got, yeah. I got lost. First question, guys, I'm a bit slow <laughs> off the mark. Uh, okay, well, the H370 or H370 rather is a, a more premium product than the B360. So if they were going to give one of those chipset overclocking support, it would be the H370. Uh, but anyway, uh, the real issue here, I guess, is why isn't Intel offering overclocking support on their budget boards? And yeah, while very annoying, I suppose it's not really a big deal. I don't know if you'd agree with that because you've got the 8700K, which is what, 330 US or something. Uh, the 8600K, which is very expensive. So you're not gonna put that on a $60 board or $70 board. And so we've got the Core i3 8350K. So that might be the only one there that would make sense. But the 8350K, I probably wouldn't buy anyway. I'd just get the Core i5 8400. Yep. Uh, got a bit lost in that one, but I suppose to just answer your question, Intel do it because they can. Yeah, pretty much. So this one is from YouTube. Uh, does the TIM between the IHS and silicon on older CPUs ever lose its efficacy? For example, a 2600K. How long does that take to happen and would it be worth it to delid and replace? Hmm. Uh, okay. I don't know exactly. Uh, I would say, it. well, everything degrades. So over some period of time, yes, it would degrade and lose performance. Uh, I've got some 3770K and 3570K chips that, well, they're quite old now and I've had them since they were provided on day one. Uh, and they seem very similar to when I first got them. So I'd say it's not really gonna be something that you'd need to worry about. I don't know if there's anyone in the comment section that's seen any real variance in temperatures from day one. I suppose there aren't that many people that still have the original chip. They probably bought it secondhand so they don't know what it did brand new. But I know what mine did the day I got them because it's in my review. And yeah, I actually looked into that when I did a few revisits and it was like, wow, they're exactly the same. Uh, but having said that, Ivy Bridge, as I just mentioned, the two Ivy Bridge processors, they were the first ones to use the Tim, the paste and not be soldered. So I believe the 2600K and the 2500K from up, up until Sandy Bridge, that's when they were soldering them and then they stopped. Yep. And everyone got upset. So yeah, hope that Gives a bit more information on that one. This one's from YouTube as well, and pretty sure this one's for Steve. Mm -hmm. I wanted to know if capture cards like the Elgato 4K60 Pro reduce the performance loss while recording slash streaming games, and should you use a second PC to do so, or just add it to your existing one? Ah, well, this is slightly embarrassing. I know I unboxed this, uh, the, uh, four, uh, the 4K60 Pro on the channel. Well, it was many weeks ago now, and yeah, I haven't installed it. It's actually still on the shelf behind me in my studio. Uh, but yeah, it looks very impressive. Uh, once I get, again, the second gen rise and stuff out of the way, uh, I'll get to it. So probably in two to three months. <laughs> but seriously, I think uh, Gamers Nexus did a video on yeah, that recently. Yeah, yep. that, yeah, and uh, that looked very in depth. That was Gamers Nexus video, so. Do it's I gonna need, be good. Yeah, do I need to say any more? So if you wanna know everything there is to know about that, I suggest jumping over to the Gamers Nexus channel and having a look at their review or whatever they did on it because it's bound to be very comprehensive. All right, next question is again from YouTube. This is a fairly technical question. I'm not sure how long this will take to answer. Uh, Tim, favorite Lego set? All right, it's actually on the shelf behind me. In fact, oh. I might actually get it for you guys. Oh, what a treat. Oh, okay. Here we go. So, this, for all you Star Wars fans out there, I'm sure you probably recognize it immediately. This is the Ultimate Collector Series Slave 1 set. So this was released a couple of years ago. Um, it's a minifig scale, so it's in, in line with the size of the minifigs you get with Lego uh, set for Boba Fett's Slave 1. It does come with a Boba Fett minifig, but that's over somewhere else. But this model is really detailed and I love it. It looks great on the shelf behind me and that sort of thing. So this is one of the favorite sets I've built and owned. It's really awesome. 
Okay. What about when you get your Millennium Falcon? Um, yeah, that might um, that might usurp it a little <laughs> bit when I get that one. Um, we need a new set for that. Yeah, that's for sure. Okay, cool. Okay, <laughs> moving on from the Lego. Uh, the next question, I'd say this one's again for Tim. Uh, would you reckon you could post smartphone reviews on the channel? I've seen one on TechSpot. Uh, I'd say a video review by Tim would be very welcomed. Uh, yes, you have done them in the past on the channel. Yeah, so I'm... I've been pretty busy with some of the laptop stuff on the channel. I've actually been working on some videos for the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus mm -hmm. that I have. Mm -hmm. um, so my plan isn't really to do the full reviews like you'll see on TechSpot. Uh, I'll still do those for TechSpot, so go check those out over there. But here, I think I'll be focusing more on sort of the, the hardware stuff. Yeah. So looking into the performance of the processors in the phone, looking at the display and battery life maybe some separate videos. Yep. That's sort of the plan with smartphone stuff is we sort of build up the channel to have more of that content. But like I said, been busy with other things. So yeah, hopefully we'll see some more smartphone stuff throughout the rest of the year. All right, next question from YouTube. Should be a pretty quick one, this one. Uh, how big is your mouse pad? <laughs> okay, well, I'll let you answer first. I actually, I had to look this up because my mouse pad is like the most basic cheap thing ever. <laughs> it's actually quite good. It's the okay. Steel Series. QCK, uh, it's just 320 by 270 millimeters. It's just your standard everyday mouse pad. Okay. Perfect for me. Okay, fair enough. I, uh, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> you just get your manly voice on yeah. this one. <clears throat> uh, I have one of those big ones, you know, for special people that cover yep. the whole desk. Uh, and yeah, I really like that. Uh, it cushions the blow when I pass out during a big benchmark session as well. So. Yeah, that happens a lot, so. All the time. You definitely so. need that. Yeah. Can't go more than about 16 hours without passing out. It's pretty hopeless. So this one's from YouTube as well. Any qualified guesses on why DX12 is still underutilized in modern titles? Um, yeah, DX12, it's more difficult to develop for. So, you know, companies that don't want to put in the resources uh, aren't going to bother with DX12. And also, a lot of games these days are still using upgraded versions of engines from yes. the DX11 era. Yep. So they're not going to go and completely redo the engine to add DX12 in mm -hmm. uh, at this point. Whereas we see some of those games that do have DX12 are running brand new spanking engines like the great one from Wolfenstein 2 that's really good. So yep. we'll start to see more DX12 tiles as they start to build more engines, but still firmly in the DX11 era. Yeah. I'm calling it when DX13 is announced, we'll start to see some DX12 titles probably. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so from YouTube, for Coffee Lake K series, should multi-core enhancement be enabled or disabled? That's a great question. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Uh, well, I assume it's in regards to benchmarking and reviews and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Obviously, I don't know if <laughs> moving along. Uh, I think in regards to reviews and whatnot, you would be best to test with it disabled, but it's also cool to test with it enabled as a feature because it's just a really super easy way to overclock your CPU and get quite a bit more performance out of it. And yeah, great, uh, like I said, feature for, uh, for overclocking for inexperienced overclockers or people that are a bit scared to give it a go, just click the button, it feels a bit safer. Yeah. Um, and it's still kind of, kind of in our operating parameters there, not for all calls, but yeah. anyway, I think, yeah, testing should be done without it, but it'd be fine to do additional testing with it enabled as well. Uh, next question is from YouTube. Tim, what laptop do you daily use and how much time do you consider to have one? Yeah, not quite, not quite sure what that last part of the question means, but I do tend to use review laptops on a daily basis. So whenever I have one to test, that's what I'm using whenever I need to use it. Yep. Failing that, I do have a Broadwell era Dell XPS 13 that still okay. works fairly well. It's getting a bit slow compared to the current 8th gen stuff, but works well enough. And for video editing on the go, I use an Acer Predator Triton 700. So nice. that's nice and slim, yep. but it's 15 inch, got the H series processor and the GTX 1060 in it. So that works well. As for if you're asking how often I use it, obviously like I game on a desktop, I use a desktop for most editing and everyday use. But you know, if I'm out and about, if I want to do some stuff in my living room or on the couch or whatever, I use a laptop. They're just handy to have around. Standard laptop stuff, really? Yeah, pretty much. Cool. Next question's from YouTube. How do you guys manage never to drop anything 
while Linus always does. Well, poor Linus. Can you give us some tips? Yeah, I, I think I've cracked the perfect solution to this, and it all comes down to him wearing socks with sandals. I reckon okay. you get a low friction environment at your feet with socks and sandals that causes unsteadiness and it just ripples through your body. And when you're picking up products with the socks and sandals on, you're just slipping and sliding and doing all that stuff. So my advice is wear proper shoes that you're meant to have in a proper sock combination. Go with that and you'll be able to handle anything without dropping it. Not sure Linus will buy that. Uh, I would like to see Tim actually benchmarking the uh, socks and sandals situation and comparing that to a few different footwear items. Uh, but as for myself, I don't think I've dropped anything. I knock, when, it, when I have things like heat sinks around that I'm not particularly careful around those. And I sort of just rifle through them and I've knocked yeah. things off before. I definitely... I've only once or twice shown footage of that because I'm pretty careful with that kind of stuff. Like thermal paste application can get dicey. Dropping hardware is a whole other ball game. Unless yeah. you've got Linus level of subscribers, you just can't get away with it on a regular basis. Yep. Uh, I did recently knock a heat sink over onto a motherboard and that was a bit, ah. Uh, but anyway, no damage was done. But I, yeah, a bit wait for a second there. Next question is from YouTube, and sorry if you can hear the ambulance or fire truck or whatever it is in the background, but we're, gonna, we're just going to carry on with yep. these questions. I'm sure you guys won't mind a few sirens and whatnot. Uh, will you make in-house benchmarks like GN did with the Blender renders or with Blender renders? Huh, I haven't really ever thought about this. I probably, I don't think so. Uh, yeah, we're not that special. <laughs> uh, seriously, though, uh, there's just so many good benchmarks, uh, so many games to test from, and talking about Blender, there's heaps of really good applications and Blender workloads out there. So I don't feel like we really need the urge to use our own. Uh, I mean, if we did use our own, I suppose we could make it publicly available, so it's no different to using ones that are publicly available, but I don't have a problem with the Blender workloads we have for testing with. Um, but yeah, half the time I don't even include a lot of the tests I'd like to, because there's just, like I said, so many great applications to benchmark yeah. with. And if I included all the ones I would like to, like a simple video would be 20 minutes long. So I think most of our content's probably long enough as it is. But anyway, I hope that one answers that question. All right, this question is from Twitter. Since you guys have tested CPUs on 720p because it represents better the differences between CPU, is it possible to play at 4K with basically any CPU due to 4K being more GPU bound than CPU bound, meaning possibly no difference in 4K gaming between Ryzen and Coffee Lake? Okay. Wasn't going to be too long before I address this one again. Yeah. Okay. My opinion is that 720p is good uh, because you can still use ultra quality settings. So anything, there are things in the ultra quality settings that will put extra load on the CPU. So using low is, is not ideal. Uh, so yeah, the, the reason you want to test at 720p is because you get to use those settings, but it's less GPU limited due to lower resolution. Uh, it's certainly not the be all or end all of uh, predicting future performance. So things like the game engines can start to utilize the CPUs better in the future, which may change the swing of things compared to what we see today. That's certainly likely to happen. It's more so with Ryze than what we saw with the FX Bulldozer series back then because they were terrible IPC-wise and everything, whereas Ryzen certainly isn't. Uh, but anyway, yeah, it's not the be all and end all is basically it. Uh, 720p testing on its own certainly could be misleading, but it's worlds better than just doing 4K testing. <laughs> uh, and just... Lastly, just adding something to that last minute. Ideally, I would love to include 720p, 1080p, 1440p, and even 4K results, even though the 4K results aren't really worth including. But it shows you what happens at that resolution. I'd love to do that in every single video, but for obvious reasons, it's just not possible. Uh, it takes a huge amount of time to collect all that data. So just doing one resolution in a ton of games is an issue. So doing three or four is, yeah, it's, it's a big deal. Uh, and I like to try and give you guys a wider spread of games rather than focusing on just a few select games and testing. So it's, it's a trade-off. You either get a couple of games and test them thoroughly, or you get a heap of games and you test them sort of in one situation that makes the most sense. So that's why I mostly stick to 1080p with ultra quality settings, as I feel like that gives you sort of the best of both worlds. 
So this one's from Discord as well. What do you prefer for gaming? 1440p 100Hz IPS or 1440p 144Hz plus TN? Hmm, um, okay. Luckily, you actually don't need to choose between refresh rate and panel quality, at least at 1440p. Mm. These days, there are IPS, VA, and TN panels that can all do 144 hertz. Um, the TN panels are cheaper, so you know if you're on a budget but you want that, you know those specs, just get the TN panels. But if you can afford the the IPS and VA ones, are definitely better. So go for that. If I was stuck with 144 um, hertz on a TN or 1440, 100, I'd still probably choose the higher refresh. It's just always nice to have. Okay. Yeah, I like image quality. Primarily, but yeah, if I had to choose out of those two, I'd go for the 1440p 100 hertz for sure. All right, so that, that's me. So we're going to wrap up this part of the Q and A session here. Uh, once again, we filmed way too many questions to put in just the one video, so we'll have part two of this Q and A session coming out tomorrow. So stay tuned for that one. Thanks to everyone who submitted questions. Give this video a like if you like it. Subscribe so that you get that second video straight into your inbox, and of course. Support us on Patreon if you can at patreon.com slash hardware unboxed. We'll see you tomorrow.